program is still Afia Morning Show. Moving on swiftly to the cost of governance in Nigeria. We've just been joined by the Trade Union Congress Chairman in Enugu State, Comrade Ben Aswagwa, as he shares his views on these costs and perhaps how Nigeria can save more money as opposed to spending so much. Thank you for joining us on the program, Comrade Ben. Thank, Thank you very you much. Morning. Thank you for having me and uh, I say good morning to our viewers. Well, lots of people have said that Tinubu's government is engaging in wasteful spending, as some of the actions has been, have been seen as insensitive and lacking in affiliation with the current financial states of the country. Do you share similar views? Of course. Um, there is no need even agreeing on it because it's very clear. You know, there is this saying that action speaks louder than voice. What is going on in the country is clear, a clear um, a statement of what we call uh, economic rascality. Because if you look at the budget, let's take a look at that. The budget, the present um, Christian the, um, uh, budget of renewed hope. In that budget, we have a, a total of uh, about 20 something uh, trillion, uh, 27.5 27 trillion, trillion naira. naira. And uh, when you look at the breakdown of it, you will come to understand that uh, we are more like uh, this Igbo saying, Onyokuna Babi Ona Choke. Because we are not, we don't, the presidency doesn't show any sign that Nigeria is going bankrupt. This is a country that has always borrowed. And when you look at the situation, the rate of borrowing is increasing by the day. And when you look at the budget, the presidency made a budget for traveling, traveling of the president and his uh, uh, deputy vice president at, to the level of 15.961 billion naira. You can imagine that, just for traveling. And a critical look at that budget also will show you where they mapped out about 9 billion naira for the maintenance, mechanical and electronic maintenance, maintenance of, um, maintenance of mechanical and electronic materials within the villa. So even the breakdown, for that breakdown, will show you where billions of money was still mapped out for vehicles, irrespective of the fact that in this supplementary budget of 2023, some money was mapped out for vehicles. So do we continue buying vehicles every now and then? How, how many? So just imagine that just a few weeks ago or thereabouts, they passed supplementary budget where huge amount of money in billions was mapped out for vehicles. And in the 2024 budget, you are mapping out billions of money again for vehicles. So if you look at the breakdown, you'll find out that it is really a budget of hopelessness as far as we're concerned. Because why I'm saying that, I'm say, I said that is that if you look at the situation, it shows that we have not taken cognizance of the fact that Nigeria is running down economically. Okay, uh, now let me point out something that bothers me most. You know, before now, they were telling us that um, the major problem we have is subsidy. That if we should stop subsidy, the economy of this country will begin to revive. But one thing baffles me, even after stopping subsidy, we've now changed the gear in terms of borrowing. So you can imagine that if subsidy was just the problem, how come the government is still borrowing even at higher rates than when the subsidy was there? That tells you that something is wrong somewhere. It's not just a matter of subsidy. The president told us just about two months after removing subsidy that they were able to save more than one trillion naira. And now he has not said anything about it again. How much have we said? We're now in December, barely uh, six months or thereabouts after, or more than six months after fair subsidy removal. Or let me just six months, say six months. So we expect that the presidency or the president himself should be giving time to giving time to, to time um, uh, account of the savings we've made so far from the subsidy removal. And one had also expected that we will be having a, a kind of robust system where we will not need to borrow so much to sponsor our budget. But if you look at even what the Minister of Finance said, you will find out that they are really they are not even really prepared on how to target. Uh, how to sponsor the budget. And let me tell you one worrisome thing. Even when you look at budget breakdown, it is not what bothers me most. What bothers us, me most as a person is that at the end of the day, what the government, what the key players pay more attention in as regards budget is those, are those things that concern them. All right, you know, I was emphasizing on even the way they implement budget. That is where the fear is. Because outside the fact that they made humongous provisions for themselves. You see them uh, um, executing those ones they implemented, they, they projected for themselves, and implementing a, just a miniature 
of other provisions. And that tells you that they pay more attention, they give priority to frivolities. Okay, if you look at um, the climate change uh, uh, program that was uh, held in that is, uh, uh, COP28, COP28. Uh, if you look at what happened in Dubai, the number of Nigerians that went, went there, that will tell you that we've not really prepared to run the country like reasonable people. How can the government of Nigeria go to Dubai with 1,411 people? Just imagine the kind of crowd. Just imagine what 1,400 something looks like. If you want to understand that, you go to a big market and look, before you count 1,000 people, you know the kind of crowd. I was teasing yesterday, I said, how many people are in Okwara Avenue? Oh, so <laughs> if you look at that, that is more like carrying a whole local government to a program outside Nigeria where one person was meant to speak. How many minutes did, did uh, uh, our president speak there? How many minutes? Just a few minutes. What did other people go there to do? do you carry ministers directors this and that and oh, if you look at the, if you look at the provisions made for them esther code and all these official attachments to traveling you find out that this, that would have done reasonable number of kilometers of road let me ask if the prison had gone there with about 20 people what would have happened would we have turned to become uh, uh, the weakest african country that's the question i keep asking what could have led to that decision? What could have spearheaded that decision to travel with over a thousand delegates? I mean, I don't understand because you're going to attend a conference where that involves countries that Nigeria has probably borrowed from before. And then they see you coming in with 1,411 delegates, the largest entourage. What does that say about our spending pattern? as a country. I mean, you have advisors, you have people around him. Did they not tell him that he was even cutting away, I mean, the population of the largest market in the entire world to attend a conference that he alone was going to speak at? What, was, what could have motivated him to do that? He should be the one to answer that question because he was just projecting Nigeria as a country that doesn't have good economic understanding of our situation. And, and um, the, that goes to say that they are running the government like um, a Tea Party affair. Well, in fact, um, uh, what we call Ofala Festival government. It's more of like Ofala, where you just gather people, come, let's go and eat, let's go and uh, do jambo. If anybody wants to travel for whatever reason, he, the person can travel on his own, not in the, on the coast. Okay, at the end of the day, they were saying that about 590 uh, people were sponsored by yes. government. That is just to say. For 13 days. Uh -huh, for 13 days, you can imagine that. 13 days. So that means that you count the money per head in millions, good millions for that matter. And if they, if they are telling us that 590 were sponsored by government, it means that these other people were sponsored about 900 plus, were now sponsored by government indirectly. Because when they say not sponsored by government, it could be one organization or the other that still depend on one thing or the other that would have helped the economy. So you begin to ask yourself, what actually was the value because if you are doing anything, if you don't run government like somebody that is running a, a business, you can't succeed. Nigeria, we have got to a point where anybody that must lead us well must run Nigeria like a private business. Because if Tinubu is running Nigeria like a private business, he wouldn't have ventured into that. If Nigeria were to be, was to be a firm that belongs to him, where he looks out for profit, would he have done that? Is it just because you see money flying around and you think there is money even when people are suffering? Because if you look at, if you understand the plight of Nigerians, you can't be, it took them so much energy to approve 35,000 Naira wage award for Nigerian workers. But it won't take you anything to sign 149, uh, 1,411 people. In fact, if I were him, I would not, even, even if those people came on their own, I would tell them not to follow me. Because that portrays bad image of Nigeria. You, some countries will see you come with such crowd, and tomorrow you go back to them to borrow money. For goodness sake, if you come to me to borrow money, and every time I see you in the bar, eating pepper soup and drinking, uh, eating unkobi and all, all that, that shows you, and also if you come back tomorrow, if I'm serious, I will tell you I can't lend money to you again. Because that shows, shows you are too extravagant. We need a reasonable miser in Nigeria. We need a reasonable miser. Miser in the sense that the person will think well before spending. Not a negative miser, by the way. But we need somebody that is economically constructive, that can compare the left, left and right gains and losses before doing anything. Not a situation where you just come up and feel, uh, yes, you are part of us, so let's go.
It's not that way. Nigeria is not a, a, just a I know that no, I, I had wanted to say that Nigeria is not a private organization. But if it were a private organization, nobody would have done it that way. So I see it as the worst display of economic irresponsibility by the government of this country. And by, by next year, we'll be talking about minimum wage. Come and see what they will do. Then they will tell us that there is no money. But when it comes to frivolities, you spend all, all, all forms of money. If it comes to other things, okay, look at the money. They, they are saying here yeah, they are prioritizing security. They are prioritizing education. They are prioritizing um, infrastructure. At the end of the day, look at it and see. Even huge amount of money, billions, was provided for infrastructure within the uh, security forces, like police and co. At the end of 2024, go to barracks, go to police uh, uh, stations, you will still see dilapidated structures. The question I have now is, after carrying over 1,000 people for this conference, now the conference is over, the president is back, what happens to the money? The go money is, is gone. That's, that's literally eating, you've eaten the money. That's, gone without any it, value. It's, it's gone. It's gone. No value. We don't even, I mean... Then you can imagine the amount of allowances provided for each and every one of those delegates. So you now ask yourself, now that it's over, what next? Even when we talk what about next? allowances, we talk about productivity. If we, if we are reasonable enough, by the time you take over 1,000 people, you take about over 1,000 people out of the country, within that period, they will not be doing anything in their um, various offices. They won't be as productive because they will just be there watching the president. Exactly, talk. they won't happen to their so, offices. So, that offices, were left so for that you keep of time. a lot of things on hold because it's just a matter of going there to have pleasure. Because as far as I'm concerned, they went there to have pleasure. What actually did they go there to do? So, if you look at the system, every time you complain, it will look as if labor leaders, for instance, that were looking for trouble. No, but we know that we are in the hands of wrong people. There is one bad thing about Nigeria or Nigerians. When their cars break down, they will look for the best mechanic without thinking of where the person uh, hails from, whether it's outside Ibo or Yoruba. So long as you know that he's a, be a better mechanic than that uh, king's man, you go to him. When you need any other repair, you go to the best. But when it comes to fixing Nigeria, we give it to the bad workers. You give it to bad hands. Because we have displayed a lot of bad leadership system. Look at the borrowing rate in this country. The way we are borrowing without any, in a situation where over about 30% of our budget is for servicing of debts. Does that not tell you that there is fire on the mountain? Yes, the president of the country has that frivolity mindset where you spend money without thinking of what tomorrow will be. Have we sat down to think of, let me tell you one thing they don't know. They feel they are, they are, they are just they are buoyant, they feel they are okay. They don't know that all these people they are ignoring in the street. The children of the pharmacists they are ignoring would become a very big problem, dangerous problems on the necks of their children and their ch uh, uh, grandchildren in later days to come. Because at the end of the day, when you frustrate them, they will showcase their frustration on the heads of those people you are leaving behind. So if you are wise enough, you don't just make yourself comfortable. You even have to make your generations to come more comfortable by taking care of even other people. Because if you ignore them, at the end of the day, they will become nuisances to the people you are living wealth for. So if they understand that, they should be thinking of how to fix Nigeria. Because someday, it will become an issue for us. We have a whole lot. OK, look at the provisions, like I was talking about. All these budgetary provisions. You know, they will tell us they are prioritizing this and prioritizing that. But at the end of the day, even the ones they provided for themselves and the ones that seemingly were provided for all of us, they will still divert everything back to themselves indirectly. And that tells you that they have not come up with the kind of leadership ideology that can help Nigeria out of our economic mess. We are still swimming in the ocean of hopelessness, I must tell you, because we've not actually be started becoming meticulous in the way we spent. Okay, so let, let's now, okay, let's bring it down to Enugu State and the Enugu State budget that has been proposed by the governor. He did that yesterday at House of Assembly. What do you make of that budget? It is seen as the highest budget in the history of Enugu State, higher than the previous one, and even a combination of the revised budget. It's high. People are wondering why it's so high, and they're wondering if it's going to be executed. It's being called the budget of disruptive economic, economic growth. growth yes. What do you think about that budget? Do you think that it addresses the needs of Enugu State? All right, in the first place, the budget is about, it's increased by more than, 100, about 130% or yes. thereabout increase. So, you know, 
one thing, like I said, is making budget. Another thing is putting it into practice. In the first place, when you want to make, there, it's not a big deal for me to say I want to budget for this year, next year, that I will build estates all over Nigeria. I will do this or, or that, buy private uh, jets. But I should ask myself the first question, how am I going to afford all this? Because if you look at the economic situation, look at our federal allocation, and by the time you multiply the federal allocation we get as a state by 12, take the average of it and multiply. We don't know what the, the next year has in stock, but if you do as a projection, that will tell you what you expect to get from federal allocation. And then you come back to uh, uh, IGR. You see, one problem I have is that sometimes when we want to improve even GDP and co, we will put it on the heads of the of head of, heads of the masses. So, but if we can develop some structures like building on industrialization and other things that can generate funds, there will be no problem. But at the end of the day, you see people being taxed unnecessarily. So, yes, it's a budget of disruptive economic growth. And we pray that it works out. Because if it works out, it's written for the good of everybody. But my fear is the availability of funds to take care of all those things. Because you may have a, some kind of projection. One will say, can say uh, it's, it's budget. Yes, it's good to make budgets. But one problem I have is the means. How would you rate how the previous administration executed the last budget of about 166.6 billion naira? How would you rate how it was administered? Uh, if you add it up, it should be about 200 and something billion. Um, if you add it up, yeah. 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 the supplementary part, it should be about 200 and something billion naira. Uh, if you ask me rate, I'll tell you that one major thing I discovered is that things were not done as stated in the budget. Because, for, for instance, you look at the budget, even the previous budget, you see humongous amount or reasonable amount after for, for infrastructure. But at the end of the day, you see infrastructure still stagnant. That is the problem. So if I think, if we talk about implementation, you see, that is one thing you consider. If you've been making budgets that you are not able to provide up to 50% of it, why increase rapidly? What you should concentrate more on is your capacity to run your economic affairs as budgeted. For instance, if you're able to execute 70, 80% of your budget every year, Nigeria will be excellent. I'm telling you, if we can execute 70% of our budget, every state and the federal government, federal government of Nigeria, just exactly the way it was provided for in the budget, we'll, we'll be good to go. So it's not even a matter of increasing. You don't, as far as, far as I'm concerned as an individual, because I don't want to say that everybody must think my, say my way. But as far as I'm concerned, what matters is what you can do, not what you even provided for in the budget. It's good to provide because that provides solution to certain things that this is where we are going. But the direction you take, for, for instance, we are talking about the past government. If you look at a lot of things, there, was, there are some certain things that we are provided for. For instance, this water we are talking about, the previous government spent reasonable money on water. I know of an organization, let maybe I'm not, I may not have to mention the name, but they collected about 600 million to fix night mile water. The same night mile water we are talking about. What did they do with it? What did they do with it? Did we get water at the end of the day? So if we talk about budget pre-provision, it's a good thing. But one other thing we must critically look at is your capacity to actualize the dream of the people when you're making a budget. Because if you say you're making a budget for me to buy clothes, and you say you're making a budget of one million naira, I will believe that I'm not going to wear that clothes. Yes. I will believe that I won't go naked. But if at the end of the day I can't see clothes to wear, that means the budget doesn't make any meaning to me. So for the budget to make meaning to Nigerians, we must see it in, prat in, the, in practicality, in reality. Let them practicalize what they budget for, and not just those things that concern them. You know there is what we call environment. At the end of the day, you even see environment. For this environment is a situation where maybe you didn't budget enough for a particular thing, but you budgeted excess for some other thing. You can use environment to move money from that particular one you budgeted excess for to the one you didn't budget enough for. So all those things were, prov were provided in the uh, economic rules to ensure good um, um, and smooth running of uh, the uh, people, government affairs. But the key players now capitalize on it to even do whatever they like. 
So when there's a spillover, when there's excess no, money... Yes, and even whatever. when they want to implement whatever, they can only do vermin to lift money to some other side. No. And you'll be there saying it was provided for uh, on, on the budget. But you may not know that that thing wasn't there. So when we provide for budgets, Nigerians have to know how to monitor budget. If you're in a sector, pick that particular amount budgeted for. Go and go to the breakdown of it, because if one billion naira was budgeted for a particular thing, there must be a breakdown. It could be that they want to, to use 55 million to buy television. They, and if they're saying they want to use 5 million, there should be a number. So when you want to monitor, you say these televisions were provided for. They, they said they were going to buy 20. How, much, how many did they buy? If they, if they bought 10, but at the end of the day, you found out that the money provided for television has been exhausted. You ask questions. Because if they budgeted for 20 and only released money for 10, you cannot prove them. Maybe the money wasn't available. But in a situation where the money for 20 was released, but you can only see 10, then something is wrong somewhere. We also have to be... But one, one thing I've discovered about Nigerians is that even if you make... Uh, like now, we have 27.5 trillion naira as budget in this country. If at the end of the day you release the whole money, but you use 12 trillion to touch lives that in such a way that people can see, they will just be clapping for you. They won't ask questions on the other excess where it went to. And that is why these politicians find it easy to divert money. Because what we are interested in is those few things we can see. Once we see one or two things that will make us believe that government is working, that is okay for us. We start jumping and praising. And at the end of the day, you find out that you've been shortchanged. So when we talk about budgetary provision by the previous government, it still, it still has question marks. And it's not stopping today. Even federal government, what level of execution did they have? You see a president that travels up and down. In fact, we were complaining about the previous uh, president, the way he was traveling. <laughs> we've entered another level of it, where if it were in physics, we, they would say that we have entered higher energy threshold. We've entered high energy threshold in terms of the traveling. And that was why the government of this country provided 15.961 billion naira for the traveling of president and vice president. Can you imagine that? So you'll be traveling. If you share, if you divide the one for president, the one for president is about 7.6 something billion for president alone. That means if you divide it by 365 days, eh, it will be about 20 something million naira per day. You can imagine that. So for the traveling. question now is, you know, we're running out of time and the problems just keep on increasing. A new energy threshold, like you said in physics, what is the way forward? How can in this cut? The way, way forward down? is for, because what I would have said is the way forward has been taken away from us. That is the power to elect. If we had the power to elect, we would have said that is the way forward. If you fail to deliver us, we will, we will discharge you and look for some and hire somebody else. But they have also stopped us at that point. I wouldn't want to say that that is the way forward. Because now, even the beavers that government of this country spent billions of money to acquire has become useless. You can now write anything you like as a result and bring out. And then the courts we have in the country will justify you, justify it, and even find whoever is challenging you. So we are in a big mess. So I'm not saying we don't have hope, but our hope is more, more on, on God. Well, because the way I see it, the institutions that are supposed to salvage this country have failed us woefully. Speaking about the judicial system, it is law week, and lawyers are taking a step back to evaluate their processes and see how they can ensure that justice is ensued in society. What do you have to say to lawyers as they celebrate law Let week? them go and do academic exercise. Let them go and speak grammar. At the end of the day, we'll, stay, we'll remain where we are. We'll, we'll be at. What, what has that changed? Have they not been having lawyers weeks? What, who has actually, you know, we have a system where the evil, the evil is instituted everywhere. Go even to villages. The people that are now given title are those that dupe other people and get, come home with la huge amounts. Even Yahoo boys that got enough money will be given one big title. There's who do one, even when he fights in the street, just because he has made money. So that is the way it is even in the uh, government, including the judicial system, where a judge can gather anything and go away with it. And when they evaluate all this, of what value will it be to Nigerians when we don't see results? Because my only problem is that we've become more of theoretical. So let us face realities here. At the end of the day, you see them speak grammar in court and after everything, somebody, now we've got to a point where we're asking the way forward. We've got to a point where millions of Nigerians will cast their votes. A few people will sit somewhere as judges and decide that 
the, the, mind, the desire of the millions of Nigerians doesn't matter. In fact, let me tell you what will happen in the next election if we didn't change the situation. People will not campaign so much. They won't, they won't spend so much money campaigning if they are sensible. They would rather go and gather enough money to bribe the judges because the power is now lying in the hands of few. And because power is now in the hands of few, there is no need uh, breaking your heads because you want to gather all the votes. What you need is gather enough money to bribe by neck to give you victory and enough to buy over the judges to uh, justify it. And that is all you need. So when we now talk about judge, uh, lawyers' week, I wish them a uh, fruitful celeb um, celebration of their week, uh, but they must look backwards because they are setting Nigeria back to an era we never even experienced before, I'm telling you. Because we've got to an era where going to court is just a nightmare. It has become as useless as swallowing whatever insult on your head. It's even better you say, I'm swallowing the loss, I'm swallowing everything, and go home in peace, than to go to court and see somebody deny you more than the devil himself. Thank you so much for joining the show today. I mean, a lot of things have been said. I do hope that lawyers, and of course, as they celebrate Law Week, look inwards and see how they can help rebrand, like Barista Chidi said earlier, to rebrand and revise all their strategies to ensure that they maintain or even pick up their image from wherever it was dropped. Thank you so much once again. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank and you. that was the TUC chairman in Good States, Comrade Ben Asogwa, speaking about the cost of governance in Nigeria and, of course, calling for a review of how much is being spent on various trips by various levels of government. And to you for joining the show today, thank you for being a part of this. Ensure you stay tuned for more interesting programs coming your way.